Riddle me this. What do you call a luxury beach resort that closes off most of the resort and forgets about the luxury? Correct, Andaz Mayakoba. This experience was unlike anything that I've ever presented on the channel, and we're gonna take a deep, deep dive. Welcome to Playa del Carmen. For any of you that are new here, welcome to the channel, and sorry that we needed to meet for such an extraordinary review. My name is Kevin, and I am the Flip Flop Traveler. I'm here to give you honest content about flights, hotels, trains, and cruises, but mostly the first two. I paid for this trip out of pocket, and the price that I paid is in the description below. Andas had no knowledge that I'd be filming today, and I didn't receive any compensation for creating this video. Everything coming up is my personal opinion based on my very, very unique experience. The rest, I'll let speak for itself. Let's get into it. I'm now riding through Playa del Carmen, towards the luxury resort enclave of Mayacoba. Think of Mayacoba as the most exclusive gated country club of the Yucatan resort scene. Before we get started with the tour and the stories, there are a couple of things I want to quickly mention first. I stayed here in late September. I booked directly through Hyatt, and I had a rate which could be refunded up until seven days prior to arrival. Three days prior to arrival, at 10.59 p.m. local time, I received an email detailing four quote-unquote services which would be closed for three days, including the time that I was there for maintenance. These included two restaurants, the kids club which was to be relocated, and the spa which was also to be relocated. I wasn't happy about this, especially since the email was sent after my cancellation window was already closed. But I was in the middle of a busy trip and did not feel like opening the make an exception for my cancellation can of worms. That plus the fact that the email doesn't sound that bad, besides the fact that the Mexican restaurant would be closed, which I was really looking forward to. So I obviously went. You know already, it, it wasn't a good stay. Way beyond that, it was a blatantly unacceptable experience for a brand like Hyatt. Frankly, for a Holiday Inn Express, it would be unacceptable. The experience here at the Andaz Mayakoba is THE hotel which inspired my penalty scoring system. The scoring system, everything that was wrong, my thoughts about it all, and what Andaz did about it, I will detail later in the video. First, I want you to see the parts that were open as I saw them. If you're considering a stay here, you definitely need to watch this. Last thing for now, I'll reiterate that it brings me absolutely no pleasure in handing out scores this low. This is my 270th video, and my fifth ever score at or below 50 out of 100. If I was doing this for the views, these videos would be making up a hell of a lot more than 1.8% of my total library, I assure you. We're now entering the lobby and reception area, which they refer to as the sanctuary. Upon check-in, I was told that I'd been upgraded to an ocean view room. That was great news, which honestly shocked me since I thought it was due to my low discoverous status. Turns out that wasn't the reason. The sanctuary does nicely set the tone for the resort. Laid back, breezy, but decidedly modern and tropical. On one side, there's a small coffee shop, which was not one of the things that were supposed to be closed during my stay, but I also never saw it open, so just saying. Andaz, for better or for worse, is always trying to be a bit clever, and so the traditional welcome drink has been replaced by a popsicle, something that I honestly wasn't mad at one bit. My room wasn't ready yet, so I hung around the sanctuary for around 40 minutes, and then was later driven to my room. Now is a good time to look at the map and talk about the location so you can understand why my room is literally a mile away from the reception area. The Yucatan Peninsula has many different neighborhoods and areas in between Cancun to the north and Tulum to the south. You'll likely be flying into Cancun though, though Tulum does have a new airport and I suppose Cozumel is an option if you enjoy swimming. The private enclave of Mayacoba is around five miles north of the center of Playa del Carmen. This is Mayacoba. It has an 18-hole golf course, four resorts, and a whole lot of nature. 
Each of the four resorts here is split between their land side and their beachside areas, and you can get an idea of why you need to drive a mile within the resort. This is one part I really didn't fully understand before arriving, specifically that the resorts are intertwined. The majority of the Rosewood is literally in between the two parts of the Andas. A big reason as to why I didn't really understand this before I arrived is Andaz's resort map. I can kinda understand why they would cut out the Rosewood area out of the map, but they're making the beach side look a lot larger than the lagoon side, when in reality, it's very much the other way around. The lagoon area up here is more than double the size of the beach area, around 60,000 square meters, not including the convention facilities, compared to 25,000 square meters along the beach and the majority of the resort's facilities are on the lagoon side. So, can you guess why I was upgraded yet? As I was told while checking in, the entire lagoon side of the resort and all of its facilities were closed. Let's explore the beach side of the resort. There are plenty of bicycles available to use on your own as well. This is the pool area. It is a beautiful area and is dotted with multiple types of lounging and seating options. Throughout the day, this area will have deep house and lounge music playing to set the tone, something that will fall into the love it or hate it category for everyone. This Andaz opened in 2016. Hyatt describes the Andaz brand as, quote, global in scale while local in perspective. Andaz hotels weave the sights, sounds, and tastes of their surroundings into each property for an experience that truly immerses guests in the eclectic culture of each local destination." Unquote. To set the tone for the resort as we continue onto the stunning beach area, I'm going to use their own words because I can see how they would normally be accurate, and it will also give you a sense of what I was expecting. Quote, the newest addition to idyllic Mayacoba, Andas Mayacoba Resort Riviera Maya in Mexico introduces guests to a hidden paradise, a place where style meets nature in an innovative hospitality experience. Open layout guest rooms and suites overlooking crystal clear lagoons, mangroves and resort gardens, the golf course, or spectacular views of the Caribbean coastline. The accommodations are naturally inspired with stylish amenities and a refined collection of artisan decor. Each has a spacious balcony or terrace. 41 luxury suites are also featuring private plunge pools. Stimulating upscale experiences entertain guests, whether immersing in a lushly preserved mangrove environment, sunbathing in one of our three outdoor pools, relaxing in the 10,000 square foot Naum Spa, or unwinding on the beautiful pristine white sanded Caribbean beach. Additionally, four unique restaurants and bars offer the distinguished culinary experiences for which Andas hotels have been known, and stunning views of the pool's lagoon and ocean." Unquote. Stunning views of the ocean is certainly correct. Mayakoba takes seaweed management just about as seriously as you can, and it seems that they'll do just about anything to keep their water clean, and clean it was. A shame I can't say the same for the loungers on the beach. As far as beaches go, if you don't want to be in the busy Cancun hotel zone, then Mayakoba really is one of your best options in the region. Here's your friendly reminder to click that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share this video with friends and family. Those are truly the easiest ways, all free for you, to help support the channel. If you'd like to support me further, my Patreon is linked in the description below. Thanks very much in advance. Far out across the sea, we can also get some views of Cozumel. Let's go have lunch at Tinta del Pupo. This restaurant is beach poolside and during my stay was open throughout the day. Here you can take a look at the menu. Note that Andaz is not an exclusively all-inclusive resort. They do have all-inclusive and I believe also full board packages available, but my specific rate did not include any meals. 
If you're considering visiting, I'd take a close look at the restaurant prices and calculate whether all-inclusive rates make sense for you or not. A la carte charges here tend to add up pretty fast. The interior is everything that you would want in a beachside open-air restaurant. Fresh and vibrant interiors, friendly service, and good food. Note that on the resort's website, right now, it currently says, quote, Tinta del Pupil restaurant will be closed to guests from July 1st to August 1st for a transformational redesign, unquote. I ordered the fish tacos, which were 21 US dollars, not including tip. All prices here are in Mexican pesos, but I'm using dollars just as a reference point for all of you. The tacos themselves were good, nothing to blow me away. Actually, my favorite part of the meal were the hot sauces which Andaz makes themselves, or has made for them. Specifically these two. Next up, we have the Vegan Bar. Vegan Bar, or just VB as it's sometimes referred to, is meant to serve salads, bowls, juices, and smoothies. Strange thing going on here though. So, this is not one of the venues that was mentioned to be closed. But the Kids Club was meant to be located here temporarily. But, that also wasn't going on here since they were replacing the floors inside the building. I was just trying to film the bar part of it, but there were two staff to my left off camera who were motioning to me that I cannot film to my left. Oops. Okay, so guess what? You already saw the entire resort, the common area parts that were open at least, not exaggerating and not filming creatively to make it seem smaller for dramatic effect. Note that every bill you sign here will have sample 18, 20, and 22% tips pre-calculated for you. Be prepared for American prices and the expectation of American tipping rates. Let's go check out my room, which was no bueno for a couple of reasons. The ocean view room that they upgraded me to was not really ocean view as much as pool centric with a distinct lack of privacy. My opening shot of the room was lost, but you can see the perspective from entering the room in these two photos which I took. And we continue the tour as normal. The rooms are modern, but bare. I fully understand the vibe that they're going for, but there does come a point where you need to take a step back and simply ask, why couldn't this have been designed with like 5% more comfort in mind? Minimalism, doesn't need to mean stiff and austere. Before we get into the extra bits, let me mention my favorite things about the room. The bed and linens were very comfortable. Shame I couldn't really use them. The mini bar was nicely stocked with free soft drinks and snacks, but I do think they could have been a little bit more locally inspired than Japanese snack mix and gummy bears. Lastly, I did really love the bathroom products. If you head down to the description, you'll find my next five videos to come out, as well as other bits and pieces like the soundtrack titles featured in this video. On your way down there, don't forget to subscribe. I release full-length videos every Thursday and Saturday, with the exception of this week. And here we have the extra bits. The winners here are the linens, pillows, and connectivity. Note that in addition to these pillows, a month before arrival, I was sent a questionnaire offering rigid, soft, hypoallergenic, or feather pillows. The loser, and my first thing that I didn't like about the room was the AC, but it went a lot further than that, which I'll get into momentarily. The other two things that I wasn't a fan of in the room was, as I mentioned, the lack of privacy due to the pool area, and also the noise bleed from the music that was played around the area. Finally, the lighting in the room is horrendous. There were literally no lights, just the end table lamps. Absolutely nothing in the ceiling. I called reception to ask them to bring another lamp to my room, as by this point I was using one of my phones to light my desk. They said they didn't have any lamps. I noticed that there was an outlet near the table that specifically said, quote, do not unplug this lamp, unquote. But there was nothing there. So I looked online and sent them a picture via WhatsApp of the lamp that was meant to be there. And magically, 30 minutes later, I got a lamp. Okay, the AC fiasco. I mentioned that I always set the thermostats to 19 degrees or 67 Fahrenheit. By the time I went to bed, it didn't seem that cool after a day of the AC being on. It was a 
likely tolerable 72 degrees. The problem was the entire unit would constantly turn on and off. I first woke up to it at around 1.15 in the morning. I raised the temperature a bit thinking maybe it was working too hard and went back to sleep. Woke up again around 2.40 to a warm room with no air blowing. Called the front desk, they sent an engineer. I explained that I just wanted some air blowing consistently, that's why I didn't have it on auto, I just had it on the high power fan. He reset the thermostat and said okay now it's working properly and it won't turn off. 30 minutes later, it had turned off and on again twice more. I called again around 4am, same engineer came and explained to me with a straight face that this is how the system is meant to work. No matter what fan setting you choose, the AC is supposed to turn off when it reaches that temperature, which isn't how AC works, but even if it was true, the area where the sensor is was nowhere near the temperature that it was set to. We went back and forth for a while. I just reverted to, I need something to keep blowing. He called the reception and told them that he was going to put it into VIP mode and override the system so it would stay on consistently. But the only option was to program the thermostat to 15 degrees Celsius. If I changed the thermostat to any other temperature, it would turn off. 15 degrees Celsius is 59 degrees Fahrenheit, which is absolutely absurdly cold for AC. But the AC actually blew at 50 degrees Fahrenheit or 10 degrees Celsius directly onto the bed with no way to change the direction. By this point, it was 4.55 in the morning and I just decided to start drinking coffee and get up. My alarm was set to go off 30 minutes later anyway. Wonderful night's sleep. For dinner, the choices were the same place we went for lunch or the beach restaurant, Sotavento, which they insisted reservations were necessary for. The restaurant is meant to invoke a shipwreck scene and serves Mediterranean food. Dinner started off with some decent bread and a delicious mushroom pate. For a starter, I ordered the mushroom salad. My fault perhaps, but I assumed that it was a salad with mushrooms, but it was in fact a giant plate of mushrooms. The flavor was good, but it was just one note, so it got pretty boring pretty quickly. Luckily, the main course was much better. I had the grilled half chicken with lime, garlic, cumin, honey, curry, and parsley, and this was truly one of the best chicken dishes that I've ever had. Well before sunrise, I went out for a long walk up and down the beach in front of the four resorts, and at least I did get a beautiful sunrise out of it. Time for breakfast at Tinta del Pulpo. Breakfast was a la carte with a small buffet as well. Note that normally this is not the only restaurant that serves breakfast. 
When ordering a main dish from the menu, the buffet would also be included, though drinks were a la carte. I had the enfrijoladas, which were delicious, and an iced Americano. Together, it came to $21 again without tip. So for me in total, I spent $134 on food and drinks. Note that when I was choosing dishes, I was being price conscious, and that included one beer in total. Here are the activity calendars from the time when I was there. Note that the resort has two websites. One is the standard Hyatt website, which is missing some of the menus. The one you'll want to go to for all of the menus, including drinks, as well as up-to-date activities, is vivaandas.com. Okay, so now we're going to get into all the crap. I'll speed this up a bit, but I just wanted to show you how large the area that was actually in operation was. There are a few rooms around the statue with the blue circle in the back, and that's it. My problem with this area of the resort is, parts of it look horrible. It's one thing to close 70% of your resort without telling guests well in advance. It's just adding insult to injury if you can't even maintain the remaining 30%. Here's the letter that I received upon arrival. It's more or less the same wording as the email that I received three days earlier. Note that it mentioned the spa would be temporarily housed in Villa 2922. Here is Villa 2922. It's an absolute mess. Derelict, I think, would be kind. That morning, very early, I took one of the bikes and rode into the closed part of the resort. Everything you see here now was closed. Ironically, besides the beach, this area had all the most beautiful parts. This is where the actual beautiful part of the resort was. As we walk around and look at the other pools, fitness center, and one of the two other restaurants on this side, let me explain everything else that you've been waiting to hear. One thing that I've never mentioned before is experiencing a, a bad flight isn't great, but a bad hotel experience is a hell of a lot worse. Chances are the flight is just a few hours, whereas the hotel, I need to actually sleep here or try to sleep. It's not pleasant when you don't have a good experience. You all know this. And this is why I don't seek out poor experiences just for views. I don't want to go through it. Second thing, even during crappy experiences, I generally don't take anything personally. The vast majority of hotels that I visit and make a video about were specifically in order to make a video about them. In my mind, what the hotel does or doesn't do, that's their prerogative. So generally speaking, if a hotel underperforms or has some issues, it's usually in my it is what it is category. I'm just here to report what I experience. But this time was different. This time I genuinely felt personally offended by the things that went on. How they were handled, and for nearly the entire time I was here, I was pissed off and felt like the resort was taking advantage of each and every guest there. I don't look at this from a what they did to me perspective, but rather all these other people that were there while I was here. They paid a hell of a lot of money to be here and they deserve access to the entire resort as well. Normally at hotels, I only give direct feedback if I'm asked. This time I ensured the feedback was given. I did not ask for anything. Upon checking out, I was informed I'd be receiving 20,000 World of Hyatt points as compensation. For reference, this is a Category 6 resort and would cost between 21,000 and 29,000 points to book a standard room, plus a $45 resort fee. Lastly, I think, as I mentioned, this is the hotel which inspired the creation of my penalty system. My penalty system is, I believe, the most fair way to show you how my experience was and how I think a typical experience would be here had it not been for the specific problems during my stay. I know to some of you this sounds like a bunch of mumbo-jumbo, but honestly, 
it took me quite a while to think of a system to allow for poor experiences, which I think would be rectified prior to publishing. I don't want to accuse the resort of always being closed. I, I don't think that's the case. I don't want to mislead you and tell you everything was peachy keen, when in reality, it wasn't. And I certainly don't want to just abandon the review. My time and money has already paid its way. So the penalty system was my balancing act. Admittedly, not a perfect one. I'm always open to feedback. The small portion of resorts that have the penalties applied, there are two scores. In this case, the property score is what I imagine the typical experience would be. My overall impression score takes the penalties into account. Both are displayed on the screen. This is to acknowledge the fact that there's a chance that everything has been fixed. In this case, I'm damn near positive that it has been. But at the end of the day, there's no point to this channel if I don't share my full experience, and it could very well happen again. If you've stayed here on or after October of 2023, or are there now, I invite you to share your experience in the comments. I see no reason why the comments section shouldn't be full of rave reviews. It is, after all, a stunning location. But if my experience happened to me, then it could happen to you too. And you may want to consider this before booking. From a few things I saw here and there, it seemed clear that while the email I received said things would be closed September 20th through 22nd, and the letter said September 22nd, on September 23rd, they were drawing a giant A-frame board, which I think was meant to close the restaurants, or something, after breakfast. Also, on their website at the time, they noted one restaurant would be closed until October 1st. So truth is, I have absolutely no idea how long the stuff was closed. I'm not going to say who I was speaking with because it's not their fault for being honest, but I did ask one member of non-managerial staff at one point what was going on. In a nutshell, they said that this was, by chance, a period of low occupancy, and so they decided to carry out whatever renovations they were doing. There was no emergency which shut down the area suddenly. At the very least, the hotel should have reached out way further in advance, explained in detail what was going on, and offered to allow a cancellation of the reservation or to help the guest rebook at one of Hyatt's many other resorts in the Cancun area. Besides Cancun itself, the Grand Hyatt is four miles away, and the Hyatt Zillar Riviera Maya is within walking distance along the beach. It's not like we're in the middle of Angola with nowhere to go. So this is a weird video. I navigated the issues as best as I could, and I think the two scores I gave to them are fair. Any service recovery efforts, in this case the 20,000 points, are reflected in the property scores service category. I hope you found this video helpful, and I encourage you to reach out to the resort and ask specific questions prior to making a booking if you have any concerns whatsoever. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on my twice weekly videos. I'll see you next time on board an Air Canada 777 in Signature Class from Toronto to London. Oh, and as always, thanks for watching until the end.